Thanks for joining us on the SUTV News Podcast. I'm Jacob Hitz alongside Bailey Casada. Nolan Huffman joins us in a little while. Tonight, we'll give you the most up-to-date statistics on the coronavirus. And PA public schools are officially going online for the remainder of the school year. All that and more, right here on SUTV News. We begin tonight with the coronavirus here in the United States as on Wednesday the U.S. had the most number of COVID-19 deaths in a single day according to CNN. John Hopkins University has found that almost 2,000 people died from the infection Wednesday. That number was tabulated in the evening hours when there was still time in the day for even more deaths. It brings the total number of deaths in the U.S. to more than 14,800. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams warned on Sunday that this week would be devastating for thousands of families. Despite the record number of deaths, there is some indication we are approaching the top of the curve. Dr. Anthony Fauci from the Coronavirus Task Force assured Americans last night in the Daily Task Force briefing that mitigation was working. We know now for sure that the mitigation that we have been doing is having a positive effect, but you don't see it until weeks later. Remember this past weekend when we all of us got up in front of this podium and mentioned that this was going to be a really bad week. At the same time, we were saying that we would hope we would start to see a little bit of a change in the daily hospitalizations, intensive care, and intubations. And New York is starting to see that. Currently, the United States is seeing around 400,000 confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 with 13,000 deaths. And here in Pennsylvania, there are just over 18,000 cases in the Keystone State, as reported by the PA Department of Health. The coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc across the globe, infecting nearly 1.5 million and killing around 85,000, according to the World Health Organization. The worldwide pandemic has been felt in 205 countries and is averaging around 80,000 new cases per day. However, some good news from all of this, there have been over 300,000 patients that have recovered from the virus, and that number is increasing exponentially. Last week, we reported on how the efforts in slowing the virus in Italy have been working tremendously. This week was nothing different. Italy's new confirmed case reports of COVID-19 are down to 3,000 a day and are continuing to drop. After weeks of waiting, Governor Tom Wolf has made an official announcement for the fate of all K-12 schools. SUTV's Megan Talley has the details. Governor Wolf, Secretary of Health Rachel Levine, and Secretary of Education Pedro Rivera made the difficult decision today to shut down all K-12 schools for the rest of the school year. This comes after multiple closing extensions from the governor, one until March 30th and the latest through April 15th. When talking with some local teachers, they explained that, quote, they've been prepared for this and remote learning since they were first shut down, and it was only a matter of time, end quote. They also said all teachers' main concerns with the news is technology access and the students' well-being. But many Pennsylvania school districts have already handed out laptops and iPads in preparation for the school system to close for good. As of today, the fate of 2020 Pennsylvania graduation ceremonies is unknown. But the teachers also say, quote, they wouldn't be surprised if school districts postpone or do virtual ceremonies much like what many colleges and universities are doing, end quote. From SUTV News, I'm Megan Talley. Dr. Fauci was asked yesterday in the daily coronavirus task force press conference on the possibility of schools going back in the fall. Here's what he had to say. You know, it, it is unpredictable, but you can get a feel for if we start talking about the things where the curve goes down and we really have minimal... Um, how we respond and what kind of a rebound we see or don't see, I think is going to have a lot of influence probably more immediately on things like summer camps than it does in the fall. Dr. Fauci then went on to say that he cannot provide a 100 percent accurate prediction for the fall in schools, but he said that he thinks that the U.S. is in very good shape. Could we see gas prices drop below one dollar here in the United States? Well, according to some analysts, that is a real possibility. According to an article from CNBC, the gasoline industry is in trouble as gas prices at the pump continue to fall. 
With refineries already cutting back 20 percent, analysts in the industry believe that numerous areas around the country could be headed for gas prices that fall under the $1 mark. As of Wednesday, April 8th, the national average for gas prices was at $1.90. According to data from the government, drivers in the United States are using just 5.1 million barrels of gas a day, compared to 9.8 barrels a day one year ago at this time. Analysts believe that the national average could dip as low as $1.25 and that refinery cutbacks could go over 30 percent. Powerful thunderstorms knocked trees down across the state and even produced two tornadoes. SUTV's Sean Smith has the story. Two small tornadoes touched down in western Pennsylvania early Wednesday morning. One tornado hit near the town of Tarentum around 1 in the morning. This EF-1 tornado traveled a distance of more than 4 miles and reached wind speeds of 100 miles per hour, according to an article written by WPSI 11 News. The second tornado touched down in Lower Burrell, Pennsylvania, around 1.17 a.m. This EF-0 twister traveled a quarter of a mile and reached wind speeds of 70 miles per hour. There were no injuries or deaths caused by either tornado. The tornadoes caused damage to several homes, however, knocking down many trees and causing power outages throughout the area, and taking the roofs off three buildings, one of them a church. The Pittsburgh International Airport reported wind gusts of 75 miles per hour shortly after 1 a.m. This is the fastest thunderstorm-related wind speed recorded at the airport since 1948. From SUTV News, I'm Sean Smith. People are reporting strange dreams recently. According to the Los Angeles Times, many people have taken to social media reporting their vivid dreams while in quarantine. Harvard assistant professor Deirdre Leigh Barrett recently conducted a survey on people's dreams. Barrett found that many people are dreaming about the coronavirus itself, with some experiencing wilder dreams than others. According to Barrett, doctors and nurses are having the most intense nightmares. So why are we remembering our dreams better? It could be because we're getting more sleep than usual. Barrett said, quote, Dream recall is very correlated with how many hours of sleep you get, and most of America runs around pretty sleep-deprived, end quote. If you are catching up on sleep now, Barrett says you may experience more intense dreams. Psychologist Ruben Nyman weighed in on the situation, saying, quote, When waking life is more vivid, so is dream life, end quote. Nyman says when something out of the ordinary happens, like the COVID-19 pandemic, our brains could process our experience through dreams. Nyman hopes that the coronavirus pandemic will show everyone the importance of dreaming, saying, quote, dreaming is a reflection of healing. When we come back, SUTV's Nolan Hoffman will bring you the feel-good moment of the week. We've got more right after this. Hey, what's going on? It's Tyler Danson from SUTV News reminding you all to wash your hands. Regular hand washing before and after certain activities is one of the best ways to remove unwanted germs and to avoid becoming ill. It's quick, it's simple, and it keeps us all from getting sick. Washing your hands is a win for everyone, except for the germs. For more information, visit cdc.gov. This has been a public service announcement from SUTV News. In the state of California, a group of teens recently created a website to deliver groceries to all the senior citizens around the area. So, of course, senior citizens are at the highest risk during this pandemic. And according to Redbook and other websites as well, news websites, with extra time in their hands from social distancing, California native Daniel Goldberg, along with other friends, he's a junior student athlete at San Marcos High School in Santa Barbara, created the website Zoomers to Boomers, which is a website where seniors in the Santa Barbara area and along with now other cities that can be delivered to elderly people can sign up to have their groceries delivered the next day by a high school student. This act is going to expire many students and many young people around the country to check in on their elderly neighbors. And here reporting, I just want to point out that, yeah, everybody that's, that's currently listening to this podcast, we should absolutely go out and check out, you know, some, some elderly people around the area and see if they need help, see if they need any help whatsoever, and obviously limiting their risk as much as possible from this pandemic. I'm Nolan Hoffman reporting with SUTV News. 
As always, thank you for joining us on this week's edition of the SUTV News Podcast. SUTV will not be airing a Sunday podcast this week, so don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at SUTV News for the latest and breaking news. And check out our website at SUTVnews.org. From all of us here at SUTV News, stay safe. Happy Easter. We'll see you next week. And as always, remember to wash your hands. Good night.